Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. The other day we picked up this lovely flatbed which we got on demo and the idea is that we can tow tractors with it. I can pick up the 135 with it which is going to be quite exciting uh, and also drop tractors off at tractor days at ploughing matches. Um, it wasn't the trailer we were after. We were after a 14 foot trailer and there's a guy um, who sells trailers in Norfolk for anybody who doesn't know called uh, Mike from Norfolk Trailers and we went down there and had a look around the yard. This was the only one they had left in the flatbed configuration and it's 16 foot and it's a twin axle. You can get them with three axles, um, however this was the only spec which they had left. They had one of these just sitting in the shed, so it's a 16 foot twin axle. So it's a little bit lighter and longer than the 14 foot we were going to go for. And I can hook it up as well because I've now got an adapter from TNS, thanks to Jack over there. Uh, so we'll try out the adapter, hook it up, put the lights on and we will finally be able to, well, if, when, depending on when Boris allows me to tow a trailer without the, going through all the paperwork, we'll be well away. There we go, that's fit, fitted on there quite nicely. Shut that off. Oh, so we can't use the lights yet on the back of this Land Rover with the trailer because it's got the different style connector which is a new, new style pin. Um, but with this adapter, the converter just goes over that, wraps in, and now we've got the old style, hope you can see that, which will plug into the Defender. Have we got lights? Yes, we've got two lights on the front, side lights as well, which is quite handy in the evening time. Brake lights as well, that's awesome. We can put equipment and machinery on which are implements such as things like the you know the machio flail mower i oh, don't think we get the cultivator on that's too heavy and too wide pallets small implements um, from the manor and things like that we could certainly put in here and because we've got the sides that can keep everything inside so if you've got a pallet you, you could just put one strap over it and you get away um, but to take the back down so that we can put the gator on or any small vehicle what you do is you have to take the back of the trailer off which just comes off like this if I remember. Normally just pop that down by the wheels. If I remember what the guy showed me at the dealership, we just pop these, take this little clip out, and then we can move the roller out of the way, that's really important. And then we've got to put the ramps under here. So doing this every time we go to a plough match or you know, taking the 135 out somewhere is going to be, I want it to be as easy as possible um, so that I can quickly get the ramps in and out. Just have a look there. And then we can load our tractor or small limp, implement, whatever we're putting on. And there we go, and it's on. So I sh really should have uh, used those, uh, as you can see just at the bottom, they are some stands which just stop uh, when you're going up the trailer, up the ramp. They then act as a, a jack to stop the trailer going up, tipping up in the air and then lifting the Land Rover. But because this is only a small, you know, light gator, it doesn't, it didn't make too much difference. If it was a tractor, I'd use the jacks. But the gator is only fairly, you know, it's fairly light anyways, best part of like 800 kilos nearing on a ton. Whereas a tractor, the 65 is nearly two ton. So then I put the jacks down. Um, but then all I've got to do is then pick up these two ramps, drop them inside, and you're good to go. And because they're aluminium, they're quite light. Because the steel ones are uh, really heavy, if anyone's ever had the steel ramps on their trailers before. And that's all locked in there. And then something we do, which is very important, is you bring down the mechanism, the roller mechanism, and you put this clip in between the mechanism and then that stops the mechanism from going up and the roll the ramps coming out on the main road because that would be not ideal. So you have to make sure every time after you've loaded that you put that Ghibli clip on there. And there we are, that's that. 
the gaiters on board with the Defender. Funny thing is, it's got the length of this trailer to put the Defender in the back as well, if I wanted to. Um, something which is conveniently quite handy as well is the 16 foot um, enables me to take a small tractor with a plough on the back. If you think a tractor, you know, probably the 135 would start off, I could put it right up there near the front of the trailer and then it would probably stop there and then I could have a plough for another, you know, four feet, four or five feet that gives me a little bit extra room and if the plough was ever too long I could always take the board off but I, I wouldn't imagine a small two, three, four plough would be that long. I think we're definitely going to get within the 16 foot length of the flatbed trailer but I'm just so happy about how the gator goes on there um, and how I could even put the Defender on there as well if we had something else, you know, if it ever broke down or had to go somewhere you can always put it on the flatbed trailer. Um, you know, that's just fantastic. So I think we'll probably go ahead and purchase this trailer. Do leave a comment in the comment section down below what you think of it. It's an Eiffel Williams which are made in Wales of all places and uh, they're a good British built trailer and uh, they've been around for many many years. We've always bought, if we could, uh, a second hand or new Eiffel Williams livestock trailers on the farm so uh, make, it makes sense to go for an Eiffel Williams flatbed and uh, they are very well made, galvanised, um, strong trailers built for the British countryside. And, um, you know, the harsh climate which we live in here with the rain and with the mud as well. That's why they're, they've got good galvanised chassis on them. Um, so, you know, I would sling a strap over this just to keep it on there. Another thing probably if I had the, as we brought back a 65 the other day, I put two straps on, one on the front and one on the rear on the set of tyres. And you don't actually have to take the sides off because if you put a strap over the tyres, it will then come down and go down to the hooks and it doesn't bend the sides in too badly. So um, you can get away with it as long as you put the straps over the tyres. Yeah, that is brilliant. Brilliant news. The trouble now, of course, is uh, I've got to wait for Boris Johnson and uh, everyone in Parliament to put this new law. So you don't have to have your trailer, go through your trailer test to tow a trailer on the road. All of the trailer tests now have been stopped, from what I, I can gather, and it's now going to go through Parliament in the next few weeks, apparently. And they, they're saying by the end of autumn, uh, it should we'll, we'll know if you can drive a trailer without a trailer test on the road, which would be fantastic because I mean I've been driving trailers on the road since I was about 16 with the tractors. Um, I've been pulling muck trailers, cattle trailers, flatbed trailers, um, but yeah, I couldn't tow a trailer behind the Defender or anything, you know, any 4x4s on the farm because I didn't have my Category B test, which is just, in a way, it does seem a bit crazy um, that you could do that, but <laughs> that's just the way of the world. Um, another thing as well which is going on which uh, we did find yesterday, when we, the other day when we picked up this trailer, is the fuel shortage. Uh, it's so difficult at the moment to get diesel or petrol um, because of the lorry driver crisis. And we've also got barley still sitting in that shed, which nobody's able to pick up at the moment because of this shortage of lorry drivers. They're talking about getting the military in to get into the lorries and start driving petrol tankers, um, fuel bowsers, to transport the fuel to petrol stations, which is um, a bit of a last resort, really. Um, but that just shows you know where we are at, where we're at in this country at the moment which is a bit of a shame um, but i do hope that you know they get on press on with this trailer test business because i did save up 500 pounds for the test and i was going to do it this winter um, but now there's just no point i've just got to wait until they give people the go ahead to tow a trailer without the category b test all right we're just on the what i call the horse muck run a livery yard uh, where we keep the horses we just take the muck out of there every day i got something wrong in yesterday's video i do apologize the um Next, the next ploughing match is actually at Deerham next weekend and the Hempnall one is in November later on this year. I'll probably head along to the Deerham one this upcoming weekend, although we have got a, a strong week of rain, so I hope the rain holds off next weekend. Um, otherwise, you know, I suppose people will have to, uh, you know, put the raincoats on. <laughs> Or uh, an, a good alternative is to whack out a tractor if you've got one with a cab on. That's not a bad idea. But then the trouble is for the spectators, they then can't see, you know, the tractors uh, ploughing too well unless they sit in the marquee, which is probably not a bad idea. Yeah, so this is my little horse muck pile where I just pick up horse muck from other people and also muck from ourselves and I just put it in a heap. It'll be one of the piles we'll just whip to with a muck spreader later on. Well, it won't be this year because of the, all these new laws and stuff they're bringing in, but it'll certainly be uh, next year, February time, we do the muck spreading. Um, so yeah, this is, this is like my pocket money really. <laughs> and a little bit of extra money from livery muck, if that makes sense, like horse yards and stuff like that. Um, it's moulding down pretty well actually. I just push it up every now and then. 
I normally charge, depending on the distance, about 100 to 150 pounds for a, a good load of muck to clear it, load it, and take it out of, the yard, out of people's yards. And it's not a bad sideline. Um, yeah. Yeah, Deerham will be pretty good next weekend. I hope to see a lot more of you guys out next weekend at Deerham. I was so pleasantly surprised yesterday, actually, at how many people were there because of the, the videos. I mentioned Co5 Plough Day in a video, and uh, <laughs> funnily enough, quite a lot of you turned up because you'd seen the video, which was quite nice. So next weekend it's in Deerham. I'll just get you the date of that Deerham's Plough Day. Yeah, so it's, up, it's this upcoming Sunday, I've just checked. It's uh, Sunday the 3rd, and it's at Swanton Morley, which is just near Deerham. There will be some information. I'll just pop it on the screen now, so for any of you guys who are just curious about it. It's normally like two or three pounds for parking, and then there's some bacon rolls in the morning, and burger vans and all that good stuff, if you're into that. Um, I did. I grabbed a cheeseburger the other day when I had a power day, and uh, yeah, it was, it was all right, actually. So yeah, make sure you take a little bit of cash with you. Just 10 pounds or 20 quid, plenty. I hope to see a lot of you there at Deerham. I'll just finish off pushing out the rest of this muck pile because I might have a little bit extra just to go up towards the gateway by the end of the year when we head into February. And hopefully by then, Boris will, have, will allow me to tow that flatbed trailer and to some of these shows and I can start taking the tractor to some shows. Otherwise, I'll just have to put the 6R on that Ike Williams for now and then put the 65 in there. Enjoy your day, whatever you're up to. It's raining this week, so uh, be positive, even if you are indoors or in a cab or something when it's uh, chucking it down. I think we've got, we've got grey clouds coming over here now. It's gone pretty cold now, so we're well into coming into winter. So then it'll be Christmas. And they're saying we're not going to have any Christmas turkeys because of the labour shortage. So uh, what, what are we going to have for Christmas? Yeah, that'll be an interesting one.